Politicians say this like it is so obvious that it requires no explanation. I mean, it, it, it would be like saying, well, you know, we all love a sunny day. We all love blue skies. We all love a cold drink of water. It doesn't require any explanation. Why is it better when women are a majority of the San Antonio City Council? Now, again, you can get all angry at me asking this if you want to, but I'm not asking it to be insulting. And I understand if you're a woman and you're in public life, then you're trying to win and you're, you're lifted and you're elevated by seeing other women win. I get that. I do. But when people say it's better for all of us, why is that? Aren't there good women candidates and bad ones? Aren't there good women public servants and bad ones? Um, is there something just, I don't know, automatically, tr- you know, better about having more women? Are, be- are women better at public service than men? 210-599-5555. Let me tell you how it sounds to me, and then you can, you can tell me what you think, and if you think I'm crazy or wrong or whatever. I think when women say this, it's because they're just enthusiastic that they're getting a chance. I think when men say it, it's just absolute pandering. It's absolute, you know, treacle. And it means nothing. And that's why they don't ever finish the thought, because blah, blah, blah. There is no empirical evidence that women run things better than men. So how is that better for all of us, as they so often say? 210-599-5555 or jack at ktsa.com. And our Stevens Roofing JR poll today, speaking of women running for office, Wendy Davis made national headlines when in 2014 she was the Democratic candidate for governor. Remember the filibuster and the pink sneakers? Fast forward to 2020, and she'll be running against Republican Congressman Chip Roy, a freshman, uh, she says she's in that race. Take on Chip Roy, who is a vulnerable first-term incumbent in a district that probably will see some outside money coming in as they try to flip more uh, Texas seats and more seats across the country from the Republicans to the Democrats. So I think Chip Roy's in the in the uh, the crosshairs. Not as much as Will Hurd is, but he's in the crosshairs. And Wendy Davis is the kind of high-profile Texas Democrat that will get that outside you know, that California money and that New York money uh, coming in. So I, I see why she's doing it. Uh, do you think she has a shot at him? 210-599-5555. Steve's on the radio. Steve, good morning. Jack, good morning. Thank you for taking my call. Chip Roy for president, so, you know, 2024, 2028, okay. somewhere down the road. All right. Love that guy. I love that guy. Well, why do you love uh, him? What do you love about Chip Roy? Because that believe he's a conservative because he stands up and fights mm-hmm. because he he held up that that uh that vote that uh, uh the natural disaster recovery vote right. or whatever it was because the dems and the republicans the so-called conservative republicans were too cowardly to stay there and be counted and he stopped it he put a stop to it i love that i love that every time i every time you talk to the guy everything he says i'm like rock on okay so how okay, big so, a threat is Wendy Davis to him? Well, you know, it's hard to say because Democrats lie, cheat, and steal is what they do. They love the fluff. She's an empty suit, and it's just hard to say. I'm sure she'll get the full backing of the Express News. They'll find all kinds of bad things to say about Chip Roy and absolutely nothing bad to say about Wendy Davis. Yeah. So, you know, it just depends on who gets to the polls. Uh, Steve, thank you for the call. I, I will tell you, my my take on Wendy Davis, and again, I, I may be wrong, who knows. Um, I think she is, as the saying goes, all sneakers and no cattle. I think she was the biggest zero I, I've seen in a long time when she ran for governor. Not, not, that, not that that was a race that necessarily should have been won or, or was favored, favorable for a Democrat. But everybody acted like she was walking on water in those pink sneakers, and I saw nothing. 
I saw someone who, I'm sorry, I don't think was very bright, uh, was very good on her feet, very well versed in the issues, um, kind of condescending. Uh, the recipient of, the lucky recipient of a lot of um, outside support and, and probably a lot of projection, again, around this idea that we need more women and it's a woman's job and only a woman can, can, can do it. Um, and, and when you think that way, when you put that kind of nonsense out, you will wind up advancing women who wouldn't otherwise be able to advance, and you will wind up elevating some women who are really not up to the job. You'll, you, of course, there are women who are up to the job, but when you take them all in with one swoop and say, well, we need more of them, no matter what, no matter where, you're going to get some Wendy Davises. And I, I don't, I, I don't think much of her. Um, it certainly didn't work in the governor's race. I guess anything can happen in a smaller race with a smaller concentration of voters, and the money can be concentrated in, you know, more on the messaging to individual voters and voter groups, and you can really get granular in a congressional district the way you can't when you're running statewide. But I, I don't think there's a there there. And um, people are going to talk about her like she's 20 feet tall, but uh, there's just not a lot there. But there will be a lot of money and a lot of support for what she symbolizes, for what she represents. Uh, 210-599-5555. You can email me, jack at ktsa.com. So talking about her, but also just generally, why do you think uh, politicians advance this idea that whether it's the Congress whether it's the legislature, whether it's the city council, it is empirically better when more women run. And, and some people will say, well, Jack, it's because they've been underrepresented for so long. They're half the population, but they're only a fraction of, you know, the seats in a legislature, or only the fraction of the seats of a city council. Now, that would be an argument for catching up that's not an argument for saying they're better. Why is it that they're better? Why are we all better off? When people say that, what does that mean? And, and I realize it may be hard for you to answer if you don't believe it, but if you do believe it, I, I, I just don't hear people completing that thought. So complete that thought. We'd like to hear it. We should have more women. We're better off with more women. The, the mayor in his victory speech Saturday night said, thank God we're going to have... A, a, a woman majority on city council. Can someone explain to me why empirically that's always a better thing? I mean, if the women are better people, better candidates, better caliber human beings than their opponents, then yes, I'm all for them. But just because there are more women, we're all better off? That doesn't sound like a fully formed thought to me. Colette is on KTSA. Hi, Colette. Hi. Hi there. Um yeah, I am a I was born with female genitalia and I am identifying as a female for <laughs> over 60 years. Okay, so you didn't have to tell me that, Colette. I, that. I wouldn't I wouldn't have made yeah. you reveal that if you didn't want to, you know. <laughs> hey, but you know anyone out there like the mayor who says that public offices need to be filled by females? Uh-huh. Uh, they're only doing that to pander for cheap votes by their gullible gullible liberals. Um, they're only continuing to manipulate the thoughts of those liberals with their false liberal narratives. And um, well, wouldn't a man who opposite. wouldn't a man in politics who thought that we needed more women, yeah, instead work behind the scenes to elect a woman to the job he's holding? Yeah, exactly. When it comes to himself, it will never happen. I, I, you know, that would be the thing to do. I mean, you, you can only elect yourself once, but if you really put, you know, roll up your sleeves and go to work, you could elect, you know, scores of women to office. Um, why not do that if that's what you really believe? Like all these guys running for president, why don't they get out if they think that women? it's time for a woman to be president? I agree. I totally agree. You know, the irony of all this is that this is just more proof that liberals are the real bigots, the racists. They'll stoop to any depth 
to manipulate the thoughts of their Kool-Aid drinkers and to take over and turn anything blue. And this is just one of the manipulation tactics they use. All right. Colette, bringing it strong. Thank you. Uh, From now on, when you call in, you don't have to tell us about your genitalia. (laughs) We'll call that the Colette rule. All right, 210-599-55, unless you want to, unless it's relevant, you know, 210-599-5555 or jack at ktsa.com. Why is it always better? Why are we all better off, say, some politicians when more women are elected or when women form a majority? There are two states, I think now, if I remember correctly, that have majority women legislatures. Uh, City council come uh, the new term will have a majority uh, of council members who are women. And again, I'm I'm kind of a take each person as they come along type. So I'm not looking for more men, looking for more women, looking for more older, looking for more younger. I just want to find the best person available to run. And then once we have the field, I have to vote for the the best or the least awful person. That's it. I think that's what most of us do. Uh, Tim is on KTSA. Tim, good morning. Good morning. I agree with your previous caller there on about her comments. Also, well, first of all, I believe socialism is on the rise. It's on the offense in San Antonio, Texas, and the nation. And I think Nuremberg is referring to liberal socialist women, is that what he's talking about? You got the AOC. Cortez lady out east, and she just brought all the social women out of the woodwork. And I, in my district, Anna Sandoval, she is the AOC wannabe mm-hmm. of Texas, San Antonio. Mm-hmm. Now you got Wendy Davis coming out. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a big socialist move push for women right so now. So it's just some and kind of women. It's not any kind of woman we can get. It's it's women that are that are advancing their cause. But I think that he was. I personally think he was referring to social women. Well, that's what I'm asking you. He okay. got on the city council. Okay. So he would, he was, he's celebrating like-minded women, not women, or women that will go along with what he uh, wants to do, which I think he has more of now. I think the city council, that's why I say I think he'll be bolder. I think the council will be more easily, um, you know, brought in line. Uh, I just don't think there's any anything standing in the way from from. Advanced, this is going to be advanced class progressive uh, liberalism now for the next two years. And, and by the way, probably for a lot longer because it's going to take a long time for people to, to get to the point where structurally they, they can't do this anymore and they won't do it anymore. And when the city isn't working, when stuff's not working, when, when, when basic city services are not provided, when people don't feel safe in their neighborhoods, You'd be surprised how fast they set aside their ideology, not abandon, but set aside their ideology to vote for people that will fix it, people that will be problem solvers. And that will that will lead to a different kind of candidate, but that may be a ways away. We're not there yet. We certainly weren't there um, on Saturday. LaFon is on 550 and FM 1071 KTSA. Good morning, LaFon. Morning, Jack. Uh, that's previous caller, I, I, I agree. It depends on the ideology of the people on the city council. And if they agree with Nuremberg, he's all happy as a clam. Mm. Now, if they were people like me, oh, no, he wouldn't be <laughs> counting that. You know, he might be saying, oh, well, it's good that a black woman's on city council. I'm like, well, there's been black women on city council. Well, no uh-huh. big deal. Uh-huh. But yeah, he would not like the way I think. And basically what you were saying about Wendy Davis, I, I forgot about the pink tennis shoes. And I remember, yeah, you're right. She was, she had no substance. She was basically all talking points. And I don't even know what she does now. You know, I don't think she's in any office or anything. No. But, no. you know, that doesn't really matter. The thing that matters is the fact that she thinks that Chip Rory is vulnerable or she thinks she's just another cog in that let's try to turn Texas blue wheel. And that's all she is. Yeah. No, if I was Chip Roy, I'm not, and he's not going to take any advice from me, but if I was him, I would prefer her to the guy he ran against last time because that guy played down the middle and was hard to pigeonhole as any kind of a liberal or socialist. Wendy Davis will lend herself to that all day long. I mean, Chip Roy can can have a field day uh, debating and talking about her. Can you imagine a debate between Chip Roy and Wendy Davis? I, 
Yeah, it's one that would be like the high school the debate team yeah, debating the, the, the you know. Mm-hmm. I think we lost LaFon. LaFon, good call, though. Thank you. Appreciate having you. Sorry today we have some calls kind of fading in and fading out. I don't know. I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe signals. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I'm fading out. I don't know. 